Hi folks, this is Joe Walden. This is the first of several videos on how I built my Raspberry Pi chicken coop controller. In this fast-paced video, we're going to look at all the hardware that was used. I'm going to move kind of fast, so just pause the video if you need to study the screen a bit longer. In this video, we're going to cover the following items. Raspberry Pi, storage, sensors, the real-time clock, pilot relay, and the GPIO pinouts, and lastly, we'll cover the power relays and their wiring diagrams. The first item we'll discuss is the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 2 gigabits of memory. This version has been around for many years and works perfectly fine for this project. You really don't need to have the latest Raspberry Pi version to make this project work. For storage, I'm using a 32 gigabit micro SD card. However, keep in mind that whatever SD card you plan to use, just make sure that the SD card is at least 16 gigabit and is designated as a class 10. For the sensor, we're using a BME 280. The BME280 sensor is a compact device that can measure temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure with really high accuracy and low power consumption. Please note on the screen that we're using the BME280 with a Stemma QT connector. You can order it with or without this connector. The Stemma QT connector is a small four pin connector that allows easy plug and play of I2C sensors and devices. The reason I selected this option is because with the Stemma QT connector, I can daisy chain the BME280 with a uh, DS3231 RTC, uh, which is a precision real time clock. This is the DS3231 RTC precision real-time clock. <laughs> That's a lot to say there. You see, the Raspberry Pi doesn't even have a built-in clock that can keep track of time. And when the device is powered off, um, it loses the time. Instead, the Raspberry Pi relies on the network time protocol, which is sometimes referred to as NTP, which synchronizes the system time with an online server when it, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet. Since my controller is out in the chicken coop, there is no internet connection. Therefore, I need to, this device, to the DS3231 device, to maintain the time in my Raspberry Pi. Also, the DS3231 has a battery in it, just like a watch battery, um, that maintains the time when the Raspberry Pi is, is turned off or has no power. This is the SaneSmart 8 relay module. This device can control up to eight electrical appliances. In my application, I'm only using four of the eight relays. These tiny relays are rated for 10 amps, but because they are so tiny, I'm reluctant to run anything with a load, you know, a high load through them. Instead, I'm using these relays as pilot relays that will then control other high capacity power relays. There's a wiring diagram coming up later in this video that explains this in further detail. Let's take a minute and look at the layout of my GPIO pins. Starting on the left side, pins 1, 3, 5, and 9 are for the I2C protocol that allows the multiple devices to communicate with each other over a shared bus. This is where the BME 280 and the DS3231 are connected. Continuing down the left side, pin 11 connects to the heat relay on the uh, SanSmart 8 relay module. Pin 13 connects to the exhaust relay on the 8 relay module, and pin 15 connects to the light relay on the 8 relay module. That's it for the left side. Let's look at the GPIO pins on the right side. Here pin 4 is powering the 8 relay module and pin 14 is the ground for that module. Pin 16 connects to the door relay on the 8 relay module. 
Please take your time and make sure you have all the wiring terminated correctly before you power up the Raspberry Pi. I urge you to check, double check, triple check your connections. It's so easy to make a mistake connecting to the wrong GPIO pins. One minor goof can burn up your Raspberry Pi. It shorts something out in there in the uh, uh, transistors and you're, it's dead. It, you can't be used for uh, the, the uh, GPIO can't be used anymore. However, you can't go wrong if you follow everything that's on this diagram. It, it, it works. Trust me. If you duplicated my setup, you should now have a layout that looks somewhat like this. I labeled each relay so that I know immediately which relay is enabled by watching the corresponding LED light that's for that relay. Notice that I have the I2C wiring going to the BME 280 first and then to the DS3132. However, in the coupe, I have it just the opposite. I have the I2C wiring going first to the DS3132 and then to the BME 280. Now that we have the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins connected properly to the pilot relays, let's look at the power relay. This isn't exactly the picture of the power relay that I used, but the specs are pretty much the same. It has a, a dual pole, dual throw switch rating of 40 amps and a 24 VAC coil. Uh, if you shop around, you can get these online for about 12 to $18 each. Let's now look at a wiring diagram that details the control relay wiring. What you see is typical for each of the four relays. You'll notice that I have a 24 volt uh, AC transformer and I'm only switching the 24 volt power to control the coil on the power relay. So controlling your relays in this way helps you isolate the high voltage, high load circuit from the low voltage control circuit. Um, it's pretty clean and it's pretty safe. Finally, let's look at the finished product. Here is a cabinet with all the devices mounted and running. You'll notice that I have five power relays. The fifth one is for an automated feeder that I plan to control in the future. It does nothing now. This Omron relay was used as an input to the Raspberry Pi GPIO when I was using an on-off solar cell to monitor the day-night condition. The solar idea was ab ab abandoned and I'm using a sunset sunrise calculation in the code for controlling the daylight conditions and it's working very well. This is the transformer and this is the Raspberry Pi and to the left you can see the DS3132 RTC. The BME you can't see because it is mounted inside the coupe on the wall behind this cabinet. On the top of the cabinet is an uninterruptible power supply. The only things plugged into the UPS are the Raspberry Pi and the router. So if the power fails, these two tiny loads will run for hours. So that's it for this video. Be sure to check out the next step video on how I built my Raspberry Pi chicken coop controller. Good luck with your project and thanks for watching.